Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. It is Tuesday, October 22nd, 27th. Sorry. So I'm go out and enjoy your day today. It's getting towards the end of the month. I know some of you are probably going to be celebrating Halloween soon, or your kids might be doing it today. I know they do different than the Halloween times on big cities. Like over here in Milwaukee, they, they let kids do it like a, f- a few days early. They don't actually let them do it on Halloween. It's weird. But I don't celebrate it anyway. It's, it's a pretty evil holiday, according to my thoughts but that's just my thoughts now the update is out as far as uh now it's tropical storms data it has downgraded after yucatan peninsula it is forecasted to go back to a cat one hurricane right now it's at 70 miles per hour 984 millibars and it's moving northwest at 14 miles an hour now not not a whole lot has changed uh the red is hurricane uh, warning yes where is hurricane warning the blue is tropical storm warning and the yellow is tropical storm watch uh, it has predicted to go up to a tropical storm all the way to alabama then be a depression as it goes off but there's a few things that has changed as far as the rainfall now as you can see the four to six inches pockets has gotten a little larger and then it's still the same over here by the carolinas and then the green is two to four inches of rainfall now this is what's changed is a one to three excessive rainfall outlook has grown in the northeast. It's gone from marginal to slight. And I'll show you why that is in just a minute. And here's the storm surge uh, that people are, that they're no one's expecting people to have. You're in a storm surge, storm surge warning if you are in this peak, pink area. As far as the numbers, they have numbers yet, but they're not exactly uh, ready to really read the people because they're, they're fluctuating. We're going one to three feet, two to four feet. It's just fluctuating. I'm going to wait till I get definite numbers for you guys. Now, here is the, the, from Cyclone Map, so you can see all the locations of all the uh, the radars showing it. This is the, the path that it's going to take. Now, it is headed straight for New Orleans, guys. It's going to curve at the last second, hit some of Mississippi, some of Alabama. Uh, now this is your euro model this what this right here is showing you the one hour intervals of the wind gust that way you can see what the potential for the wind gust is going to be because after it calms down and starts hitting land it's going to downgrade quickly but the wind gust is still going to be an issue uh, from this hurricane slash tropical storm now you see some places it gets up to 50s, 60s. So go ahead and stop and pause if it gets in your area so you can see what's going on for you. Uh, I'm just trying to make this a quick video today. Now this is for the Euro for Alabama and Mississippi. This is the 10 meter wind runs. So you can see that when it comes on land, it comes on land as 58 knots. Let me raise that up for you so you can see better. Now it comes on land 58 knots. Then it goes to 70 knots right by Mississippi. And then it goes down to 41 knots immediately. So it will be coming on land as a hurricane, as a Cat 1 hurricane, 70 knots. But it will downgrade very quickly to a tropical storm. Now as we go through the models, I got to Louisiana for the 10 meter wind. So you can see as well what's going to be happening for y'all over there. And according to the Euro, it's going to be 56 knots, and then it's going to go to 72 knots right before landfall, which is a, which is a Cat 1 hurricane. And then as it goes by, it's going to go 70 knots to Mississippi, and then going to 41 knots over to Alabama. But it looks like definitely Louisiana and Mississippi is going to get the strongest winds that it does have to offer. Uh, now here's the GFS showing that 10-meter winds, and a 10-meter winds has it 50 knots, Go to 79 knots, according to the GF, GFS. It shows it being a little stronger, and it's a little more to the west. And then you show it going to 71 knots on landfall, going to 56 knots from, from Mississippi, and then going to 39 knots. So the GFS is showing a little more west, not much, but it is showing a little more strength. Instead, instead of 72 or 74 knots, it's 79 knots. So it is showing, showing a little stronger on the GFS than it's showing for the Euro. Now the 10 meter wind gust, this is your, your wind gust potential because this is the most part of the storm that's going to be is a big wind gust uh, problem amongst others. Now it has 67 knots and it goes to 90 knots right before landfall. Then it goes to 86 knots. So 90 knots is your max wind so far on landfall. Then it goes to 72 knots when it goes towards uh, Mississippi. Then the wind gust goes to 71 knots as it goes to Alabama. 
Now, as far as your, your Alabama and Mississippi for your 10-meter wins, this is the GFS, and the GFS shows that it'll be 71 knots when it goes toward Mississippi, and it'll go to 56 knots quickly, then 39 knots for Alabama. It's going to be downgrading very fast, 33 knots, then down to 29 knots. So this storm is weakening quickly as soon as it gets on land, but the wind gust is the problem. This is your GFS 10-meter wind gust for Alabama and Mississippi, and it gets to 86 knots when it gets towards Mississippi. Then it goes to 72 knots as, a, as it gets on landfall. It gets down to 72 knots. It continues 72 knots all through the Mississippi-Alabama uh, track. And then it goes down to 66 knots as it moves away down to 56 knots. So it starts weakening, but it does come on land as a Cat 1 hurricane. Now this is your 10-meter wind gust for the Euro. This is your forecast, so you can see the whole track of what's predicted to happen to everybody in the path. And if you take it and look on the right, you can see the numbers of the of the wind knots. This is not miles per hour, it's wind knots. So remember, it's going to be more higher of a number for miles per hour. Just divide 6 into it and add that to your knot number, and you'll get your miles per hour. But you can see the track that it's taken and the impacts it's going to get. It is going to be a strong uh, Cat 1 as soon as it comes on land, then it will weaken quickly which i really have to worry about is the wind gust the wind gust potential is very high now this is wsv3 this is gfs and it does show that the winds will get to cat one it will stay a cat one all the way across uh, the gulf of mexico and then it will go down to a, a tropical storm when it hits alabama and then back to tropical storm again when it leaves out now there's gonna be a big moisture problem uh, with this storm and as you can see when it comes by and comes on shore, it pushes all these, these storm clouds with it. And I'll show you landfall in a second. But as it comes up, look, look what it does to the central U.S. It just explodes with rainfall. And y'all just, that's why you're in a slight risk for uh, what, what, what could happen as far as flooding and, and storm surge. So as we go towards landfall for the GFS, fast forward a little bit. And it starts getting on land on the tip of it. I mean, he's going to start feeling the storms way sooner. But this is, if you see the time and date on the left, it's the 28th. It's at 3 p.m. It starts moving in. And it starts getting really on landfall and really thick storms when you get around 7.30 to 8 p.m. on the 28th. But thank God it is going to be a fast mover. So that's, that's a good thing. There's not going to be no stalling going on. But look at the way it brings the rain and the flooding on land as it comes. Now this is a 28th at 3 o'clock in the morning. The storms are going to start rolling in. You can see the freezing rain and the snow over there. But look at all this storm. This is going to be flooding. This is going to be a lot of flooding. And there's going to be a lot of high wind gusts going with this rain. This is at 10 p.m. on the 28th. All this rain... Here comes your, your tropical storm moving across the states. This is 7 a.m. on the 29th. This is for the northeast. And by noon, it should be almost out of there. But it is fast moving, and it's been bringing a lot of rain. So God bless everybody that's, that's in this storm because it is going to be a lot of wind gusts. It is going to be uh, a lot of flash flooding, and it is going to be a lot of rainfall. Uh, the damaging winds I don't show are so damaging. The damaging part that we need to worry about is that wind gust. That wind gust is really could bring trees down, knock powers down, and a lot more damage because 90 knot damage, <laughs> that's a lot of wind. Now, I'd like to give you all a blessing this morning. It is Tuesday morning, so God bless every single one of you. I hope you all have a great day today if you go to school or if you're going to work or whatever it is you're doing. Keep the Lord in your heart. When you have nothing going on and you're, you're not working or doing something else, keep your mind and your heart on God. Sing hymns. Remember that. Keep them in your heart. Psalm 20. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Salah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in thy name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the 
I that the Lord saveth his anointed, he will hear him from his holy heaven for, with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in heroes. I'm sorry, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Amen. God bless you all today. Y'all have a great day today. Stay, stay up spirit. Stay good. Help others as much as you can. All glory does go to God. Amen.